Can you imagine a life without toilets? <laughs> what did they use for toilets back then? Cesspits, donny cans, chamber pots. In the 19th century, sewage was a big problem for the people living in Melbourne, and untreated sewage was often found its way to the street gardens and stormway drains. As you can imagine, this was not very pleasant. Wow, this place pongs. What's that terrible smell? It's disgusting. There was such a nasty smell about the place that Melbourne started to become known as Smelbourne. Welcome to Smelbourne! It's such a great place to visit! We'll even give you a free pick for your nose. Don't worry, you'll get used to the smell after a while. The thought of sewage in the street is not a nice one. <coughs> what is sewage? Sewage is any waste that is in water. So it's not just waste from your toilet, it's waste from your shower, bath, washing machine, dishwasher and kitchen sink. It's hard to believe, but sewage is actually 99.8% water. Can you believe it? I still don't recommend you drink it. The use of sewers to carry dirty water to the sewage treatment plant is one part of the urban water cycle. Catchment to tap. Sewage to the sea. Drains to the bay. Now back to Melbourne. It wasn't just the smell which was a problem. As you can imagine, having untreated sewage and wastewater running into the streets and rivers was also causing some health concerns. We are not very happy about this. In 1888, the public outcry ah! forced the Royal Commission to investigate the issues. In 1891, there began the huge, huge task of trying to plan and implement a project to fully saw Melbourne. Now that's a big job. As part of this plan, the Spotswood pumping station was built. In 1894, they began to build the pumping station by making a large 25 metre deep hole which was blasted out of solid basalt. Boom! So what would you expect a pumping station for sewage to look like? Maybe... Or... Is this a castle? Wait, no, it's the pumping station. The pumping station was a significant importance to everyone and a lot of pride was taken into its design and construction. Wowza! So how did the pumping station work? Steam. Steam? That's right, steam. They used coal to produce steam in five large boilers. Each of the boilers used seven tonnes of coal per day. The steam was then used to work the four Austral Otis pumping engines. Wow, they must make a lot of noise. Listen and see. Electricity arrived at the pumping station in 1921. The electric pumps were much smaller and more efficient than the steam pumping engines. So what happens today? Sewage still flows underneath the site on the way to the new pumping station in Brooklyn and then onto the Western Treatment Plant at Werribee as an important part of the urban water cycle. 